What if one of the world's busiest waterways suddenly became too risky to use? The Bosphorus Strait sees over 38,000 ships a year, more than the Suez and Panama canals combined. It's narrow, congested, and cuts through the heart of Istanbul, a city of 16 million. But it's also the only natural link between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. Now, that critical link is facing growing pressure, physically, politically, and environmentally. So, who's building a way around it? Turkey's answer, Canal Istanbul, a man-made canal to rival the Bosphorus. The Balkans are pushing pipelines to reroute oil to the Aegean. Europe's inland waterways are expanding, and in the Arctic, melting ice is opening a stunning new path, the Northern Sea Route. In the race to replace the Bosphorus, who wins? And who risks losing control of one of the world's most strategic corridors? The Bosphorus Strait is just 30 kilometers long and as narrow as 700 meters in some places. It cuts straight through Istanbul, linking the Black Sea to the Sea of Marmara and ultimately the Mediterranean. But despite its modest size, it plays a massive role. Oil from Russia and Kazakhstan, wheat from Ukraine, containers from Georgia and Romania, it all flows through here. And that flow is growing fast. Today, the Bosphorus handles more than 650 million tons of cargo every year, with up to 150 ships passing daily, including tankers carrying up to 3 million barrels of oil. But here's the problem. The Bosphorus is free to use, thanks to the 1936 Montreux Convention, and Turkey can't charge tolls or limit traffic unless for safety reasons. The strait has sharp turns, strong currents, and passes directly under several of Istanbul's busiest bridges. One mistake, one crash, and a catastrophe could unfold in the heart of the city. So what's the solution? Let's look at the projects competing to take the pressure off the Bosphorus. The most direct challenger is right next to the Bosphorus itself. Canal Istanbul is Turkey's boldest infrastructure proposal in a generation. A 45-kilometer artificial canal running west of Istanbul, connecting the Black Sea to the Sea of Marmara. It would effectively create a second Bosphorus. The canal would be 275 meters wide at the surface and 20.75 meters deep, large enough for massive oil tankers and container ships. That's critical because the real Bosphorus is too narrow and winding for many modern vessels to pass quickly or safely. The route would cut through farmland, lakes, and wetlands, turning Istanbul's European side into a man-made island. And because it's not a natural strait, Turkey says the Montreux Convention wouldn't apply. That means tolls. That means control. Turkey claims the canal could handle up to 160 ships per day and generate as much as $8 billion in annual revenue. But there's a catch. Actually, several. First, the environmental impact. Canal Istanbul could disrupt the natural salinity balance between the Black Sea and the Sea of Marmara, altering currents and ecosystems. It would also cut through freshwater basins that supply Istanbul's drinking water, threatening long-term sustainability. Second, the risk of earthquakes. The canal's planned route passes through soft, seismic soil, raising serious safety questions in a region already vulnerable to powerful quakes. And third, who will pay? Estimates for the full canal range from $25 billion to $65 billion. Construction officially began with a bridge groundbreaking in 2021, but major excavation work has not started. Turkey is actively seeking Gulf investment from Saudi Arabia and the UAE, but Western allies and even China have remained cautious. Still, if completed, Canal Istanbul could completely change the game. Not only could Turkey charge tolls, but it could potentially allow warships that are currently banned under Montreux. It's a massive bet and a geopolitical wild card. If Istanbul is the maritime gate to the Mediterranean, what if oil never had to reach Istanbul at all? Enter the Burgas Alexandropolis pipeline. This is a proposed 280-kilometer pipeline linking the Black Sea port of Burgas in Bulgaria to Alexandropolis in northern Greece. Instead of sailing crude oil through the Bosphorus and Dardanelles, tankers would offload in Burgas. The oil would then move overland through the Balkans and emerge directly on the Aegean coast, completely bypassing Turkish waters. Originally championed by Russia in the early 2000s, this pipeline could carry between 35 and 50 million tons of oil annually about 1 million barrels per day. 
that's roughly a third of the current oil flow through the Bosphorus. Technically, the pipeline is straightforward. Pump stations, monitoring systems, and a large storage terminal on the Aegean side. But geopolitically, it's anything but. The project collapsed in 2010 after Bulgaria withdrew due to environmental concerns and pressure from the West, which opposed increasing Russia's control over European energy. But now, it's back on the table. With the EU banning seaborne Russian oil and Turkey increasing Bosphorus transit fees fivefold, Greece and Bulgaria are once again exploring the pipeline. This time, it might carry non-Russian oil, such as Kazakh crude or Middle Eastern supply headed north. Either way, it's a potential bypass with massive implications. If built, it would shift the balance of oil transit from Turkish to Balkan hands, and it wouldn't be subject to Montreux or Istanbul's control. While Turkey and the Balkans plan pipelines and canals, Europe is quietly building another route, rivers. The Danube River is the second longest in Europe, stretching over 2,800 kilometers and flowing into the Black Sea. But in Romania, an artificial 64-kilometer shortcut, called the Danube Black Sea Canal, connects the river directly to the port of Constanta. And from there, barges can carry goods all the way into Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands via the Rhine-Main-Danube Canal system. In 2018, this inland route moved over 32 million tons of cargo, everything from coal to grain to steel. So, how does this bypass the Bosphorus? By creating an alternate corridor. Instead of shipping cargo from Black Sea ports through Istanbul to Mediterranean waters, goods can now go upriver, inland, and out to Western Europe without ever crossing Turkish Straits. The limitation? Barges are smaller than ocean-going tankers, and the canal can't handle the largest vessels. But it's reliable, cost-effective, and surprisingly resilient. During recent conflicts in Ukraine, barges were used to carry grain out of the war zone through the Danube, avoiding the risks of Istanbul or Russian interference. But Europe isn't stopping there. Serbia and North Macedonia have revived an ancient dream, a 651-kilometer canal connecting the Danube to the Aegean Sea via the Morava and Vardar rivers. This Morava-Vardar canal could cut 1,200 kilometers off the current shipping distance and link Central Europe directly to Greece. It would require massive dredging, dozens of locks, and artificial lakes to manage elevation changes. But if built, it would offer a continuous waterway from the North Sea to the Aegean. No Istanbul required. Status? Still on paper. But China, which already owns part of Greece's port of Piraeus, has expressed interest. The Balkan Canal could become the European leg of the Polar Silk Road, if it ever gets built. Now, for the most surprising alternative of all the top of the world. As Arctic ice melts due to climate change, Russia's northern sea route is quickly becoming navigable in summer months, and that's opening up a shipping lane between Asia and Europe that completely bypasses the Mediterranean and the Bosphorus altogether. In 2023, the northern sea route moved over 36 million tons of cargo. That's still small compared to traditional routes, but it's rising fast. For China and Russia, this is a strategic dream. Imagine sending LNG from Siberia to Shanghai or crude oil from Murmansk to India without ever sailing near Turkey. The NSR shortens the journey between Shanghai and Rotterdam by about 40%. It also avoids tolls, piracy, and political choke points. But it's not perfect. Navigation is limited to just a few months a year, June through October, and ships need ice-strengthened hulls or Russian icebreaker escorts. Insurance costs are high, and rescue infrastructure is sparse. Still, Russia is investing heavily in Arctic ports, nuclear icebreakers, and LNG terminals. China calls it the Polar Silk Road, and as climate models predict longer ice-free seasons by 2030, the route could gain real traction. For now, it's a seasonal niche, but in the future, it might pull serious traffic away from traditional choke points like the Bosphorus. While challengers race ahead, the Bosphorus isn't going quietly. And under Montreux, Turkey still controls military passage. That's a powerful card, especially in times of tension between NATO and Russia. Yet, the writing is on the wall. Canal Istanbul is promising a new future with a new price tag. The Balkans are turning pipelines into politics, Europe's rivers are flexing their inland muscles, and the Arctic is melting into a brand new frontier. Want more on global trade battles? Check out our other video, $60 billion race to replace the Strait of Malacca. 
Discover how another critical trade route faces its biggest crisis ever and what it means for global commerce. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating construction stories.